Ladies, okay. we have to get your thoughts on perhaps one of the biggest social stories that is currently happening right now. I, I hope you've heard of the story of one Boniface Murage Wangeshi who was found sneaking his child from KNH because he couldn't afford to pay about 56,000 Kenyan shillings. The court found him guilty. Priscilla Nyokabi, allow me to start with you because you're not only an advocate of the High Court, but um, you're a commissioner within the National Gender and Equality Commission. Mm -hmm. um, this, one would say, poverty levels here in Kenya, 56,000 Kenyan shillings. Sure. You're a father, you have a new child, you mm -hmm. just want to go with this child home. Sure. But poverty pushes Kenyans to do things even though they are illegal, yes, stealing a child, and the court finds them guilty. But one would then ask, are courts in Kenya truly favoring Kenyans? The common wananchi, the common man, because honestly, uh, and perhaps you can correct me on this, if you were the judge sitting and if you were to look at this man's background, he's the breadwinner of a family. He can't afford 56,000 Kenyan shillings. How would you have ruled in that case? Yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, a really, really difficult one because of the poverty in our country. And then it, it combines two disciplines. Criminal law is a different discipline and civil law is a different discipline. When I was at Kituwecha Sharia, I remember going to court on the same matters. That hospitals should not detain people who cannot pay uh, the hospital fees. When you don't pay land rates, uh, which are another government, uh, f uh, you know, sort of uh, rate, you don't get imprisoned. But in hospital, we used to, to argue that uh, keeping those people in hospital after their uh, date of uh, uh, discharge mm -hmm. is, is, is an imprisonment of sorts because now they cannot leave. And it's so sad because when you keep them longer, you charge them more, they couldn't even afford what was already spent. So we used to argue that there should be very strong social services in our hospitals. Uh, the NHIF mechanisms should work. And more importantly, there needs to be a kitty, welfare-like kitty, where people like Boniface could have gone for some resources that they could use to get out of hospital. Uh, but it's sad that it's, it turned out into criminal law. It's sad that the, the judge did not you know, appreciate uh, the poverty that our, our citizens are, are living under. I think that that whole case, although it is unfortunate, it has led us to a debate mm -hmm. on our health system, right. what we need to do to improve that health system, and more importantly, what needs to be done for average Kenyans and majority of Kenyans to access health care, and particularly in big support of the UHC. And we are hoping that UHC is going to work. But uh, let's see hospitals also start to put uh, mechanisms and, 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 and uh, facilities. I don't understand how hospitals don't have a strong social service mechanism that says this person is too poor to pay the services that are required but needs treatment and gets treated mm -hmm. and gets discharged. So the stealing of the baby shouldn't arise again. Mm -hmm. And the same in Pumwani and many other hospitals as well. I, I, I'm not sure about the condition of the child, that um, how serious it was to take uh, this um, Boniface there. But as chair of the health committee, there are certain elements that should not be finding themselves at the top most uh, referral facility in the country, yet they are. Well, this is one of the challenges um, that we are facing in the health sector. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I want to say there are some facilities. Last week I visited Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, mm -hmm. and I saw they have a very, uh, a, a very good um, support from their social mm -hmm. uh, services department. Mm -hmm. And they walk, they have a journey from the time, from the accident and emergency, from the casualty. They normally engage the patients when they come in, such that by the time you are being admitted or you are being treated, already they can tell whether you can be able to pay or not. Mm -hmm. And so one of the unique uh, hospitals that I found was waiting in uh, referral hospital in Eldoret. They do not detain anybody and they do not even detain a patient. Mm -hmm. So by the time your time to go home comes, they already know you can pay or mm -hmm. you can't pay. The dilemma we have in Kenyatta National Hospital, one is a very huge facility. Second, we also have Kenyans who would want just to go in hospital and not pay. Right. Then we also have a huge number, majority who cannot pay. And so one of the things we are looking at is first and foremost, should you detain somebody? You know, when somebody is dead, should you detain the body? The body? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the discussions we are, we, are, we are having. Number two, yes, we have an HIF. Um, I'm not so sure whether this was an, a newborn, when they were sneaking out. Yes, oh, it is a newborn. newborn. It's a newborn. They, well, oh, yeah. the, the NHIF covers for three months. And mm -hmm. the, one of the debates that we're having now, and our recommendation as the health committee, is that the NHIF should cover the first one year of the child. Mm -hmm. Because we know if, for any mm -hmm. breastfeeding exclusive is six months, any complication that may, may arise for that newborn, between and the immunizations between zero to one year is very important. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a need to review the NHIF cover for our, the newborns from six months to around one year. But most importantly is the um, 
this, the, the way the, the, the courts might be handled, the, the case, the guy admitted he was guilty and he's a poor person. So lesson for us as a, the, the Committee on, on Health and also as a ministry is how do we help how do we help Kenyatta National Hospital mm -hmm. have a facility, a social support mm -hmm. facility like more teaching referral, mm -hmm. such that when somebody is coming in, we already know. By the okay. time they're admitted, we already know this one is this case. But also we have a problem with Kenyans, and I, I, I want to admit, mm -hmm. such that if you release one person, then everybody doesn't want to pay. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know at what level we are going to be sincere with, um, with ourselves. And that when you see like the free education that we are having, mm -hmm. Most of the countries will have uh, clusters. They, 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 the, the most poor people who actually receive even government support from the meals and everything else. There's a middle class that can afford below half or the, some of the basic mm -hmm. things. Then of course there's another top that supports the people who cannot afford. But in this nation, if today we say anybody who is not able to afford, you'll even find members of parliament saying, I'm also in that category, I'm not able to afford. I'm also needy. So, and we are also needy. Yeah. And I think we need to be sincere. That's why you find Kenyatta National Hospital waiver a lot of bills, and we have many, 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 many pending bills. But still, we have people who have the capacity to pay, but they don't want to pay. And I think that's a dilemma they are facing. But with a proper social service uh, services support, mm. we can be able to Which sort can even some vet. of this. All issues. right. Gladys Wanga, we'll let you have the last say on this issue. Yeah. What I'd like to say is um, it speaks to our health system and, and we've had a big debate around our health, mm -hmm. our own health system and strengthening lower level facilities. Is it possible that uh, Boniface's daughter would have gotten treatment at a lower level facility mm -hmm. uh, so that he would accrue less bills, so that he wouldn't have to go all the way to KNH? Mm -hmm. But the last time we had a problem at KNH and we went there, we found that it's the first point of call. Mm -hmm. It's becoming mm -hmm. the first point of call first facility where you feel unwell and you are you arrive at KNH. Yeah. Why are you arriving at KNH? There is a weakness in our health system and now we are talking about universal health care being one of our big four agenda and I think um, uh, both the government and our committee in parliament on health mm. and all of us really have mm. a responsibility to ensure this works because this story for me flies in the face of uh, UHC as a big four agenda flies straight in the face. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about universal healthcare when people are having to steal their children out of hospital because of their inability mm -hmm. to, to pay? Mm -hmm. Fifty six thousand is money that if 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 we had NHIF and so on cover, you know, if people had taken NHIF covers and so on and were paying little by little, they wouldn't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. So UHC mm -hmm. has to work so that we avoid Priscilla, I'm going yeah. to let you sure. say... Just very, very lastly, is on the, the, the move to decongest Kenya National Hospital. I think the regional referral hospitals have also got to be elevated. The level five hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, the 11 of them, they need to be given referral status okay. so that they can take up some of the cases so Kenyatta National Hospital doesn't die to die, doesn't need to die with the weight of all the Kenyans going into it. And it's a debate that we have with the, with the health committee. And so this particular 2020, 2017 to 2022 mm -hmm. must be the season of us correcting our health care system. And we hope the that the chair here yeah. will lead the country in correcting we hope uh, so. the correcting mistakes that are in the health systems. situation.